for this cover I decided to use the same technique that I did with my other cover which was Grace for the amazing Aloha Comic Con. Um, so basically I penciled it first, inked the character, masked her off and then started the watercolor background, waited for it to basically dry before I peeled off the masking. And now I'm just erasing the pencil, um, pencil marks that I had left over so that I could start with the Copic markers. I have three to four basic skin tones that I use um, on average. They're kind of translucent. Ones such as, I think this one was um, E51 Milky White or Brick Beige, which is E31. And, um, and then I go straight to an E21, which is Baby Skin Pink, or Barely Beige, which is E11 for Copic markers. Um, I have, I've co I covered, uh, you know, these colors in different videos that I've done previously, but those are my go-to. It does speed up the process for me. I don't think too much about, you know, picking another base tone. And I start with the lighter tones because if I mess up, it's easier to fix. Whereas if I had darker, started off darker or mid-tones, then it's kind of hard to revert back when it comes to skin tones. Um, try to be really careful with that because I know that if it looks muddy, you know, in, in terms of skin tones, it's very noticeable. Whereas with other things, you could get away with it for the most part. So right now I'm using um, Baby Skin Pink. And this is generally the um, color I use to do the mid-tones. Um, and the cheeks and the nose tend to be like a pink. And uh, this is a good color to use because it's not it's not too, it's a little bit translucent and it's not too, too much on the yellow and, and too much on the pink. It's kind of in between. And you know, when you go back in there with um, a shadow tone, like a gray or a blue or even a, a lavender, it actually uh, blends in really nicely because of the slightly warmer tones. The paper I'm using helps me blend the colors pretty well so I don't have to worry too much about it being kind of streaky or of course you have to also make sure that the um, marker is pretty much filled with ink or else it's just gonna streak and everything which you know when I'm working on tight deadlines for interior pages that does happen sometimes so it's not something that you know that's why I try to do corners or edges first before I go into the middle where the blending is going to be very noticeable and, you know, especially with the face, it's something I try to be very cognizant of before I start to, you know, go really fast, which, I mean, sometimes I do it with certain panels. And when there's that mistake, it's like, gosh, you know, I have to go in there and try to edit that with uh, a lighter tone. So if I do make a mistake, I tend to go back to the base tone, which is in this case, a uh, milky white and kind of blend it in with that and do as best as I can. And, you know, try not to rush through the face as much as possible. So I do give myself just enough time to make sure that I don't have to rush through faces at the very least and um, make the blending, especially for covers, a lot more smooth and, you know, cover quality, I suppose. I guess working with traditional mediums means just learning to mitigate as many mistakes as possible. And I know there's such a thing as happy mistakes, but... Um, Sometimes it's nice to plan a little bit ahead so that there aren't unhappy mistakes and the intended um, outcome of the pages actually turn out the way that you know you want it to. And here's a look at Mike's page from the first volume of Fathom to get an idea of the colors he's using and the way the armor looks and the way that he renders the faces and stuff so that when I'm working on my piece I kind of... Um, you know, kind of get inspiration for that without going too far of Mike's style and, and kind of, uh, you know, where it looks like it's, it's being, it's not being innovative. So right now I'm going in with Prune for some of the shadow areas and her hair is also supposed to be a white. So I'm actually using the lavender toned, uh, gray tone to get the same kind of, um, color scheme as the shadow so that it blends in nicely instead of it just standing out too much. I could use like a, um, a cool gray, but I think it's better to just use this, this tone right here because this piece is going to be more towards the um, magenta and like the purple bluish cool tones. So 
this was kind of my choice for the hair. Right now I'm going in and adding all of the velvet and pinkish tones to her outfit um, and then kind of blending it in. So with this one, I didn't go with the lighter tone first. I went with the mid-tone and then added the light tone and then kind of wanted to just change the, um, the, the tint of her outfit so it was like a brighter pink because I decided I wanted to pop out more. So this one took two to three layers of just the lightest pinks that I could find and um, violets and then just added the darker tones afterward to kind of bring it out and make it look more three-dimensional. So this is like a cobalt blue and you know doing some of this stuff was the hardest part for me because a lot of uh, superheroes have like the deep blue deep red colors which makes it really hard uh, to blend with markers sometimes unless you do it right and so because there's not a lot of um, colors in between if you don't if you didn't purchase them to try to uh, blend it nicely so I tried really hard not to I mean like blend it with I don't use blenders so it was really tough to try to blend it and it made me it's kind of nerve-wracking So this is the prune or BV02 that I used for the hair and the shadows earlier on the face and start, I started to blend it um, using this tone because I wanted to unify the whole entire piece and it was supposed to be more of a, you know, um, like I said, a violet or a magenta kind of hue to this piece. So there's some parts like her skin and the background that are a little bit more on the warmer side, kind of a complementary color, I guess you could say. And, um, you know, going in there and adding some of the finishing touches and unifying the outfit as well as the sword and the hair and just kind of going in there and tying things together and tightening things up before I start to ink the, um, the whole entire uh, figure with some black ink with a brush. During the time that I was working on this piece, um, no one has actually seen this character yet, so this was a character reveal. So it was kind of neat to come up with um, a brand new character all together along with um, Vince and some of the guys at Aspen. And uh, it was kind of neat to leave a mark also on Fathom because, you know, growing up that was the one book I wanted to work on. And it, it's been a dream just to be able to do stuff for the comic, whether it was penciling, coloring, doing covers, and, um, you know, uh, just to what can I say? It's it's something that I've always dreamt about doing. So doing a, a unique character that's never been seen before and a brand new character is definitely a dream come true. So now I'm inking this with a very, very fine brush um, and the ink is kind of the ink I always use. It's, you know, waterproof and I like the matte finish for this ink as well. So, you know, if, if I had more time, I think I would probably use brush, but you know, nowadays I'm using brush pens cause it, um, speeds up the process, but for covers, you know, I tend to have a little bit more fun and 
um, I tend to pull out my brushes and uh, my inks that I love so much and just start kind of playing around with it. And it also gives it, you know, every single medium we use to ink is going to give you a different look and a different effect. And I think that the brush is always going to be master and king. And there's a fluidity that, that you get with these brushes that you can't get with, you know, multi-liner or um, even brush pens where it's a certain consistency in terms of size. But when you have a, a collection of brushes, you know, you could just kind of go crazy and use different brushes for the outline or some of the detail. So I do end up um, using a multi-liner for some of these uh, parts, like for her outfit, because I didn't want it to be a solid black line. And sometimes what I do is go in there with a sepia tone, a purple or a pink, a red or a blue multi-liner. And it's a Sakura makes these and um, go in there and actually put detail into it so that it's a more full piece and it's not just the outline that you get with Copic markers and the brush pen, or sorry, brush. Again, I think it's very important to create a contrast or a depth of field from the background and that's why I picked to do this piece with a watercolor background and then the foreground be inks uh, multi-liners and uh, Copic markers. So I just go in there and add some of the darker spots with the ink and then, you know, kind of bring it, bring it to a finish with the multi-liner and just adding the finer details. Since it's a cover and, you know, it needs to pop out, there's a lot more detail on a cover than there would be for an interior page per se, or, you know, even a splash page is gonna have more detail than your average panel. Ah yes, my favorite part, the um, gel pens. This is what makes every piece pop out and luckily I found the best thing for it. I used to use um, like the gel, jelly roll pens, but I felt like they didn't hold on um, well enough. So this was actually quite the upgrade and I appreciate having it around actually, because if I forget to use it, somehow my pieces look like there's something missing or it could pop more. Now, of course, it's easy to go overboard and I try not to, but you know, I can't help myself. I mean, it's so much fun. Um, but you know, I go in there and I add little textures and stuff like that, so long as it's appropriate for the piece. I mean, it's easy to go, like I said, to get carried away, but this piece I think could uh, benefit from having parts pop out like her hair, you know, and um, her shiny armor and her sword. It's a water sword, so I think it needed to um, pop out and have streaks in it, kind of like water. And of course the background is, there's some parts that there's water in there and it's, you know, dripping stalactites and stalagmites you know, kind of shiny. And then, you know, I figured why not just go in there and add some of the elements that's gonna make that pop out as well. And then even make the background seem a lot more mysterious, sort of like a mist or um, something that's it's very, uh, it's kind of cloudy in there, but anyways. I think the word I'm trying to use is like a mist or a fog and I, I wanted to give it that element like it's underneath a waterfall and the waterfall is creating this mist. And I'm you know, going in and trying to finalize some of the detail in the background um, with the, the darker ink just to make the background also pop out or make it seem like it's more, um, she's kind of in, in the middle of it all and so the uh, seleg tights are coming down and it makes it more three-dimensional. Okay, I think I'm gonna call this piece done. Thanks as always for watching, and until next time, keep creating.